right, so uh, in the program, the title of the talk is Eight Years of Numisma.org, but I wrote that uh, last December, and uh, as I was browsing around the Internet Archive, I found that Numisma.org is actually a year older than everybody thought it was. So in 2009, uh, digging through the archives for the website, um, I found that um, um, a very early prototype had been created um, that was mainly a publishing uh, scheme for the inventory of Greek coin hoards, which was a, a bibliographic reference uh, published in the early 1970s of, of every Greek coin hoard that had been published up to that date. Uh, and this uh, was the, uh, the brainchild of Sebastian Heath, who's looking very archaeological here, uh, investigating pottery sherds. And Andy Meadows in the front, who looks for some reason very sad in his official Oxford <laughs> photograph. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so um, this was the very first foray into linked data for, for numismatics. Uh, by 2011, uh, some funding had come in from various sources, fairly modest funding, you know, 5,000 here, 10,000 there, from Stanford and um, the AHRC in the UK um, to continue um, with the data entry of the Greek coin hordes and begin doing uh, markup tagging to link the entities within those hoard records to URIs that reflect the mints uh, in the hoard and add in um, latitude and longitude for the fine spot of the hoard and uh, various uh, things like that. And so um, in addition to the IGCH hoards, which numbered about 2,300 or so, um, there um, were URIs for nearly every Greek mint and historical region, um, and uh, a selection of Roman emperors as a proof of concept that Sebastian Heath had made. So maybe we had created URIs for 20 or 30 Roman emperors by this point. And, um, March of 2012, uh, we uh, came to Southampton, CAA in Southampton, and demoed a prototype of uh, online coins of the Roman Empire, which is uh, based on a uh, typology of Roman imperial coins beginning in Augustus and ending with Zeno about 490 AD. And by March, I think we had made it up through Hadrian, so the first 120, 130 years of the empire. And so um, around um, just after this time when we uh, made our paper presentation in Southampton, uh, the very first European coin find network slash namisma.org meeting was held, uh, hosted by David at Frankfurt, in Frankfurt. And um, Part of the letter that I uh, dug out of my email archive from seven years ago uh, invited uh, about 20 people or so from various institutions in Europe, plus um, Andy and I from the American Numismatic Society to discuss areas in which uh, numisma.org can potentially serve as a resource for the numismatic community in a linked open data environment. And so um, that was the first meeting um, where we were discussing standardizing uh, data practices across different institutions um, with their different practices and different languages of their databases. Um, there was mass confusion at first. Most of the people at the meeting didn't really understand what linked data was and what we were aiming to do. Uh, we weren't forcing a, a new database standard on anyone, but rather uh, encouraging people to adopt uh, open web standards to make data sets more interoperable with each other. So it wasn't really until the next year um, when ochre becomes more developed and using preferred labels in different languages for numismatic concepts that we were able to provide um, the ochre interface in, in different languages. And then once people saw the, the value of that, then linked data for numismatics started to get larger buy-in from the community. And by 2013, um, the group is a little bit bigger now, and we had a, our meeting in Carnuntum. Unfortunately, we don't have any photographs of the first meeting in Frankfurt anymore, so, but 
It was about half of this size that you see here. A uh, major event um, for numismatic link data was when OCHRA received um, three years of funding from the American National Endowment for the Humanities to complete the project. So that was uh, really official recognition at a very high level of the work that we were doing with numismatic link data. Uh, in 2017, we basically finished OCHRA. And in 2015, we unveiled the project on a new platform and uh, implemented a, a, a formal ontology that was developed by Karsten Tulla at the University of Frankfurt. And so we went through a pretty significant uh, data migration to formalize our data model and um, publish it in a, in a new system that worked much better than the old one, which was actually uh, based on uh, wiki software. So there's a lot of hand editing of um, HTML fragments with um, markup tagging underneath in the very, very first version of Namisma. Um, we met in, in Poland in 2015, and the group is a, a little bit bigger still. Um, and then 2015 was also another year where we start getting into um, Greek numismatics in a more serious way. So Roman was uh, well underway, um, very rigorously curated, but Greek world, and Andy will talk about this more, uh, is a little bit of the Wild West, I suppose, as far as uh, ancient numismatics goes. So um, we published type, type corpora in a Republican coinage and the typologies of Alexander the Great, as well as working with the uh, Egyptian National Library to publish their collection of coins in both uh, um, Arabic and English, so that necessitated us to create a lot of new numisma concepts for Islamic numismatics in both languages. Uh, in 2016, this uh, German consortium of small university uh, museums mostly, um, but also uh, powered by um, the, the d database system of the Berlin uh, collection, um, came, al came along and uh, there are now 17 or 18 um, museums in Germany that are all using the same system and have the same export mechanisms, so they're all involved in the linked data cloud as well. Um, in 2017, we um, started implementing IIIF, which is um, an image, um, stands for the uh, International Image Interoperability Framework, so this is a community standard that's come along for um, standardizing image APIs and um, annotation services for images. So Rutgers was the first, and we've since um, uh, expanded into other collections. Uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale joined the Link Data Cloud in 2017, effectively doubling the size of our uh, collection of Roman Republican coinage. Um, so now there are about 50,000 Roman Republican coins available um, through our system. And uh, they, they use IIIF as well, so that's high-resolution images for all Republican coinage. Um, last year in Valencia, you can see that uh, the group is now twice as big, uh, basically, as it was three years ago. So it's a, a growing organization. And um, we began formalizing working groups at that point, so now there are Roman and Greek and Roman provincial working groups and uh, medieval numismatics and coin hordes and that sort of thing. Um, at the moment, there are uh, 68,000 total typologies um, published through linked data standards and 15,000 subtypes across Greek and Roman coinage. Uh, we've aggregated uh, more than 216,000 physical specimens from nearly 40 um, museums and archaeological data sets. Um, the photographic coverage of Ro Roman Republican coinage is nearly complete. I think it's probably the most comprehensive resource for that material that exists in the world, basically. Um, m most of the coins that are in the system have been photographed, and now just about half of all the coins in the system um, implement IIIF for high resolution public domain images. So on the horizon, um, 
We're still expanding into different areas. A, a Swiss corpus is uh, being worked on by colleagues in Switzerland. Um, Andy is going to talk about uh, Greek coinage and um, Byzantine uh, coins are being worked on by Dumbarton Oaks and a lot of other expansion into other um, fields of numismatics. So that's uh, the near future for numisma. So thank you. Thank you.